lovely to be here. Good to see you all. These stage lights especially make it feel so official. It's really cool. last weekend and um, it's on YouTube if you want to watch the rally you know if you didn't make it Stop the message. So the messenger gets. 
gets blamed behind these prison walls in solitary confinement in a land of rolling hills and royalty and other such refinement is someone who is a hero to whistleblowers everywhere who help them tell the world of the crimes of Tony Blair behind these prison walls you'll find a mortal man the reason why we know what happened in Afghanistan where the soldiers before were torturing civilians in their terror war behind these prison walls is a part of WikiLeaks an eloquent orator but you won't hear him prison walls is one who stands accused of exactly what offenses the U.S. has refused to say precisely which or to try and clear the mist or to explain how he's not the same as other journalists Is a person they deprive of most of the things in life that keep us all alive. A person being tortured as we stand here now for revealing the war crimes. Why, when, where, how? Behind these prison walls. It's a teacup in this storm With knowledge there is power So be solutioned by the crown A 24 hour a day Indefinite lockdown Behind these prison walls We kind of have a have two songs in a set with that one, I think. Really, this is um, the other one. It's a really it's a wild, crazy story if you don't actually know what we're singing about. But I'm not going to try to explain it. <laughs> When Jillian met Stella in the embassy, in the only room for seven years that he would ever see, guarded by police with cops on every street, an unusual situation for the first time you should meet. When Jillian met Stella, the time they spent was increasingly within the walls of a little tent. 
where they could have some privacy from the ever-present gaze under which she was spending all his nights and days. When Julian met Stella, there was the chance of grace. Perhaps the president would decide to drop the case. They had two children. And beneath the watchful eyes of the Americans and British and all kinds of other spies, when Julian met Stella, on Embassy Road was before he was abducted and forced to go to Belmarsh Prison. Without a chance to speak, awaiting the extradition that the USA seeks. When Julian met Stella, the folks at the UN and people all around the world spoke out then. This journalist belongs. Among the free, not in prison for exposing crimes against humanity. When Julian met Stella, It's, it's, it's just getting as ridiculous as society. I don't drive a car because they run on gas. I divide it. It is run on biomass. I ride a bike or sometimes a skateboard. So fuck off all you drivers and your yuppie hordes. Sitting all day in the traffic queues. I'm a better anarchist than you. I don't eat meat. I just live on moldy chives or the donuts that I found in last week's dumpster dives. Look, you people in that restaurant, I think you are so sad when you could have been eating bagels like the ones that I just had. I think it is a shame all the bourgeois things you do. I'm a better anarchist than you. From a moldy coffee sack I like to hop on freight trains I think that is so cool It's so much funner doing this Than being stuck in school I can't believe you're wearing Those brand new shiny shoes I'm a better anarchist than you I don't have sex And there will be no sequel Because heterosexual relationships Are inherently unequal I'll just keep on marching To anti flag and Differences in gender, race, or class. All you brainwashed breeders, you just haven't got a clue. I'm a better anarchist than you. I don't believe in leaders, I think consensus is the key. I don't believe in stupid notions like representative democracy. Whether or not it works, I know it is the case that only direct action can save the human race. So when I see you in your voting booth, I know it's true, I'm a better anarchist than you. I am not a pacifist, I like throwing bricks at when the cops have caught me and I'm taking a few licks. I always feel lucky if I get a bloody nose because I feel so militant and everybody knows. By the time the riot is all through, I'm a better anarchist than you. I only talk to those as pure as me. It's not a safe space. If someone disagrees, they might have me thinking thoughts that I don't like. Pretty soon we'll all be praising the third right. Yeah, I don't talk to fascists, and if you do, then I will Let's see. 
We have a list of songs that we... Oh, oh good idea. Great idea. Let's see. recording of it three years ago. It's on an album called Strangers and Friends, which you'll find on Spotify. <laughs> Where else? It is a felony offense to um, obey uh, Matthew 25 in the state of Arizona. <laughs> it's actually several different felony offenses, just three felony offenses to be exact. Go to Pima County in the Sonoran Desert Lands. You'll find the town of Iowa among the cactus stands. The only town you'll see, the only water tomb. When someone is thirsty, there's no question what you do. For well over a century, it was a normal thing to have an extra jug of water that you might bring. 
In the harsh Sonoran Arizona summer heat We'd rather give the vultures something else to eat You didn't ask where I was going Nor where I'd been I was hungry, you gave me food I was thirsty, you gave me drink I was naked, you gave me clothes I was a stranger You let me in I have this book here A story I learned well The tale that it tells It's spelled out very clearly In Matthew 25 What a good Christian does When a stranger arrives You didn't ask where I was going Nor where I'd been I was hungry, you gave me food. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was naked, you gave me clothes. I was a stranger. You let me in. Now there's a crackdown with life and death on trial. The only place with water for a hundred miles Facing twenty years in prison is a very mighty rod Now all of us are forced to choose between Caesar and God You didn't ask where I was going hungry you gave me food I was thirsty you gave me drink I was naked you gave me clothes I was a stranger you let me in you let me in you let me in SUV Alton Sterling was selling DVDs. Eric Garner had just broken up a fight. Brianna Taylor was asleep in the middle of the night. Tamir Rice was playing in the park. Elijah McLean was out walking after dark. Dominique Clayton was sleeping in her bed where she was shot by a cop in the back of her head. Say their name. Say their names Say their names Say their names Walter Scott was driving to a store Betty Jones was answering her door Philando Castile was driving home with his girlfriend Anthony Hill was naked on the grass when he met his end at some Ford was walking in his neighborhood. Michael Brown was blown away just standing where he stood. Kendra James was shot to death at a traffic stop by yet another unaccountable killer cop. Say their names. Say their names. Say their names. Say their names. 
Jefferson was playing a video game with her little nephew. Gun down just the same, Oscar Grant was celebrating the new year. Handcuffed when the shots rang out that everyone could hear. Every reason pulled into a parking spot. Not long after that was when he was shot. George Floyd was just shopping in a store. Micah Xavier Johnson thought he was still at war. Say their names. 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 They're on that raft 
parked up on the ocean there in the trunk of that car. My great-grandparents were refugees, that should be a normal thing to say. I was born in New York City, my people came from far away. songs that other songs that we have well um, it's pretty bleak times and um, makes me makes me miss simpler days um, I was taking a walk in an Irish village one rainy January afternoon and I came across a monument and as I was approaching the monument we could probably turn the vocals down I think it's a little feed, feedback as I was approaching the monument there was um, a plaque to the right which I noticed because it was somewhat unusual, it looked like there was fire on this plaque. And so I walked close to the plaque and recognized my nation's, um, you know, the, the, the chief executive residence, the White House, uh, in flames. And um, I thought that's very nice. I'm very happy to see this right here in this Irish village that I wasn't expecting to see a picture of the White House in, <laughs> in flames. But here it is, and that's, that's lovely, and it brightened my rainy, cold January afternoon. And um, I went and asked my friend, Tommy, what the White House is doing in flames in the center of town. And he said, well, the British general who in the War of 1812 um, uh, successfully ordered the burning down of the White House and the Supreme Court and the Congress uh, was from this town. And, uh, and had the town council had asked him to write a song about this man. And Tommy thought about it and just couldn't think of anything much nice to say about a very wealthy British land-stealing Protestant military general who had, <laughs> in, in his horse stables he was now living. And uh, so, but I, on the, on the, on the other hand, <laughs> I thought something could be said about this man. He did accomplish something great on that one day at least. Okay, a little more mandolin in the monitors would be wonderful. That's, thank you. Somebody said it's like the contractual obligation of all musicians to say something like that at some point in their performance. If there's a monitor, you have to make some reference to the monitor at some point. Then I feel like a real professional, you know. Although in England they call it fallback, so then I, you know, then I would just sound like an American, you know. Robert Ross was from Ross Trevor. He was born in County Down. His family was given land there by the British crown. He was a man born of the gentry, born with wealth and fame. But he joined the British Army to serve his queen and make his name. And of no hope in the Napoleonic Wars, he fought in many lands, in Holland and in Spain, in the far off Egyptian sands. He was wounded there in battle, came back to fight another day, and he was sent off to attack the USA. York had been sacked and burned by invading Yankee men, but the Canadians regrouped, chased the Yankees home, and then the British Navy made its way to the shores of D.C. town, where General Ross burned the White House down. The year was 1814, the U.S. was in retreat. It was a Canadian victory, an American defeat. Without the French to help them, they got their ass whipped by the crown when General Ross burned the White House down. The 
place had just been constructed only 12 years before, but it had to be rebuilt soon after this disastrous war. The president turned tail and ran like a raggedy clown when General Ross burned the White House down. He was killed a few months later. Irish rebels stopped him in his tracks. He was buried in Nova Scotia in a town of Halifax. He might have been forgotten, but he'll forever be renowned. He's the man who burned the White House down. He's the man who burned the White House song goes over best at uh, like folk festivals in Canada, but I, I only got to play at one. <laughs> so I should say folk festival in Canada, but... One day you're working, the next you're not. And what you have is what you got. You lost the job you thought you'd keep You wake up at night, you can't sleep You got time now, time to dream Time to break down, cry and scream And the earth spins round again Sometimes your goals of any size just vanish in front of your eyes and all that's left is what you see like the squirrel outside your window in that tree and the man there on the screen who wants us to try injecting the stream and the earth spins around again The dice are up, no telling where they'll land when they come down from the air. Everything can change and fall apart. It can affect your lungs and your heart. Assumptions thrown, they're in the breeze. Who knows what they'll be when we're done with this disease and the earth spins around again. One day you're okay, things are alright, then all of a sudden, overnight, foreclosed, evicted, living in cars, empty hotels, and wine bars. Wake up to learn, our collective fate depends on how we cooperate, and the earth spins around again. And the earth spins round again. historians of Wales was uh, in 1831 and uh, the rebellion went by the, the main slogans of the rebellion was uh, down with the king and cheese and bread it was definitely not the first time cheese and bread was a, used as a revolutionary slogan there that definitely had happened before in other parts of Europe 1831, the age of industry begun, for the working folk of Wales, life was short. With wages cut again, it was only sensible that then, folks took over, shut down the debtor's court. 
the gentry pulled the wire, told their men to open fire and restore the rule of their estate. But as the night descended and the battle ended, the soldiers had all fled behind the gate. They chanted cheese and bread, and our children must be fed in the days when Wales rose against the crown. They chanted cheese and bread with a bloody loaf above their heads when the red flag flew in Merthyr Town. The message went out east and west to put the gentry to the test. The cavalry was ambushed and turned back. After so long plain defense, the time had come now when the workers were the ones on the attack. They chanted cheese and bread, and our children must be fed in the days when Wales rose against the crown. They chanted cheese and bread with a bloody lump above their heads when the red flag flew in Merthyr Town. sent soldiers by the score till order was restored. Then came Dick Pendaren's execution. Another martyr for the cause, meant to give us pause. The next time people call for revolution. They chanted cheese and bread, and our children must be fed in the days when Wales rose against the crown. They chanted cheese and bread with a bloody loaf above their heads. When the red flag flew in Merthyr Town. Well, sing a song that if you if you sing the chorus to this song in the United States, you are, at least in theory, I think, well, legally, you are actually breaking the law and could face a potential 25-year prison sentence. But so far, <laughs> they never prosecute anybody for singing this song. Rodney, Rodney Coronado was arrested for a speech that he gave one evening by the San Diego beach. He stated his opinions, they sounded just like mine. Bars of 2029 prosecutors said the problem was the speech it showed intent. I couldn't figure out exactly what that meant. You can't describe an action, say you thought that it was swell. So what'll happen when we sing this? Who the heck can tell? But we don't like the condo and we're gonna burn it down. Corporate terrorists drive them out of town. We'll bring a lot of gasoline, pour it on the floor, light a match, say it. just broke the law to be an eco-terrorist, now you just gotta flap your jaw, and hey, who knows by the time you have a chance to blink, whether you're a criminal might depend on what you think, but we don't like the bulldozer, we're gonna burn it down, corporate terrorists drive them out of town, we'll bring a lot of gasoline, pour it on the floor, light a match, say a prayer, and run right out the door, burn it down, burn it down. Sing this song with me, raise your fist and caterwaul. If we fight together, they can't arrest us all. Cause we don't like the Walmart and we're gonna burn it down. Corporate terrorists drive them out of town. We'll bring a lot of gasoline, pour it on the floor, light a match, say a prayer, and run right out the door. Burn it down. 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 We're going to burn it down. Thank you.
burn it down. 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 One more time with conviction. Burn it down. 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 We're going to burn it down. 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 sure I have any more confidence in Twitter now that Elon Musk <laughs> is buying it. I'm, I'm scared, but it, it's a horrifying phenomenon as it is. Yeah. This machine is dangerous. It communicates. It can carry means that can destabilize a state. It can carry rumors, whether true or not. It can sow discord like an agent or a bot. It can bring people together. It can unify. Or it can spread half-truths and lies. This machine is dangerous. It can light a fire. There may be no limit to what it can inspire. Bring a person to the edge of sanity and back. It can mobilize a mob to attack. It can fire ammunition with each swing of a pick. Faster than Jackie Chan can kick. This machine is dangerous. It's locked and loaded. Each string is a grenade that has to get exploded because it exists here in the world on the net. Whether it's on Twitch or on your TV set, with words, ideas can spread. Each one a potential bullet in the head. This machine is dangerous. It can make you dance. It can make you feel like maybe you have a chance. It can sell a brand of ketchup. It can save your soul. It can create division if division is the goal. It can build a movement or it can call it out. Of one thing at least there is no doubt this machine is dangerous well I haven't not driven you all out of the room yet so a couple more. Let's see. For 7,000 people to cross the sea. We had to go at night in the cover of the darkness. There's no way I could exaggerate the threat. We tried not to make a sound or nothing that would mark us, but no one knew how far across we'd get. And I thank God for the fishermen who gave us a ride and took us over to the other side. find so many boats ready for the journey to find so many prepared to risk it all not everyone could read the stars not every boat was worthy not everyone prepared to heed the call i thank god for the fishermen who gave us a ride and took us over to the other side some risk everything for free Accepting nothing but a handshake Some charged enough to live on for a year 
But such details don't matter when so much is at stake, when all that matters is a boat that you might steer. We lived out the war in Sweden while so many others didn't. Most people now would easily agree. To say we deserved asylum would simply be redundant in the boat lift of 1943. And I thank God for the fishermen who gave us a ride and took us over to the other side. I thank God for the fishermen who gave us a ride and took us over to the other side. And took us over to the other side. And took us over to the other side. Thank you. Come along here. Can I get you back up here for one more? Thank you all. It's been a great pleasure. Thanks so much to Petra and Jonas, and uh, that was, it's been a wonderful evening. And, um... Don't, don't stop now. Don't stop now? <laughs> you can keep me up here if you're, if you're hardcore enough about it. <laughs> Playing uh, tomorrow night in London, if you know anybody in London, and next weekend in uh, uh, Heidelberg on Friday in Trondheim on Saturday. So I'm kind of moving around. Yeah, Trondheim at Ufa. Yeah, on the seventh. So, if you know anybody in Trondheim, please tell them go to Ufa next weekend. Thank you. <laughs> Let's see, where's the D? I have no idea. I never remember what this what this is. Let's see, when the world when the world has gone crazy and it's all becoming clear. Is that low? When the world has gone crazy and it's all becoming clear. No, that's high. <laughs> <laughs> when, the world, when the world has gone crazy, I think. When the maybe, we'll try. When the world has. It's a cappella, so I'm lost. I, I do not have perfect pitch. No one knows. <laughs> no one knows until, until the person trying to sing harmony is like, oh shit, now how am I going to hit that pitch, you know? And then practice with that. Pitch. When the world has gone crazy. I remember. <laughs> you remember? Oh, good, good, oh, good, good. Okay, so everybody can sing along. <laughs> yes. When the world has gone crazy and it's all becoming clear, when they're gunning down our comrades and it seems the end is near, as they're loading up the launchers for the tear gas grenades, we can take off our bandanas and kiss behind the barricades. When it's madness all around, and you can see this at a glance. We will sing and we will cry. We will laugh and we will dance. As they shout their marching orders beneath the helicopter blades. We shall seize the moment for a kiss behind the barricades. They will try to break our spirit. And at times they may succeed. But our love for the world is stronger than their greed. When the building is surrounded and hope begins to fade, in my final hour, a kiss behind the barricades. As the movement grows, there will be hills and bends, but at the center of the struggle are your lovers and your friends. And the more we hold each other up, the less we can be swayed. Here's to love and solidarity, and a kiss behind the barricades. Yes. trips to Trondheim. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ufa. Yeah. I was in Svartlemon 
and uh, my friend Bjorn Hugo was, you know Bjorn Hugo? He was, and he was sitting in front of the shop, the, the little organic uh, shop, and um, reading one of many huge books that he has about Norwegian history. And, uh, and he was in a part about uh, emigration, just sort of mentioned, like, do you know that 50% of the population of Norway left Norway in the 19th century? You, like you can, you, if you want to see where they went, then you know, come to Minnesota. I mean, I can, I can, you'll see a lot of familiar place names. Yeah. I came to this country, left Scotland far behind, evicted from the highlands. Told to go and find a new life in America, across the Atlantic Sea, where I joined the millions of other refugees who ended up at Ellis Island as the century began. The wretched of the earth from every foreign land. When I came to this country, broken and bereft, I quickly saw I'd have been no worse off if I'd never left such awful deprivations as I'd never had to face. Born by Swedes and Russians, Africans and every other race. Billions of people trying not to end up dead. From cholera or black lung or getting clubbed on the head. I came to this country to have something on my fork. It was obvious the first thing was to get out of New York. I learned to hop the freight train, some other stiffs and I. Caught a westbound Rattler to give Oregon a try. Signed up for the logging camps, became a timber beast. If I had stayed there any longer, I'd have surely been deceased. When I came to this country, I worked the copper mines in Butte. I was a candy dancer in Spokane and a candy dancer suit. I heard the rebel girl speak one night in a railway yard. I joined the union right away and got my first red card. Became a hobo organizer for the one big union grand. Preaching the wobbly gospel across the starving land. I came to this country, I soon enough lost track. Of the number of times I felt a billy club upon my back Or how many times I saw the tents with freezing kids Working in the mines instead of living on the skids How many times I heard the horrid crying from below Those trapped there in the dungeons with nowhere left to go When I came to this country it was a hopeful time of desperation The red flags flew all across the nation but when the war began in Europe we refused to die and kill we refused to fight a boss's war and serve the boss's will that's when they got the legion to burn down our union halls all across the land where there used to be four walls when I came to this country I had no great expectation but I didn't think I'd end up back here awaiting deportation on a steamship on the Hudson, I watched the sunset fade With 20,000 others swept up in the Palmer Raids Counting myself lucky that I'm still alive Remembering the moment when I first arrived When I came to this country When I came to this country When I came to this country song about uh, one of your neighbors to the sort of, well, from here, I guess, to the north and west. I 
<laughs> to a country that knows what to do with its bankers. Iceland is an island with half a million or so Vikings, mostly known for volcanoes, hot springs and fishing, known for its welfare state for being good and socialistic, certainly not known for being corrupt or nepotistic, but in the USA and Europe when they were deregulating banks, Iceland's politicians took bribes and joined their ranks, soon you had a situation one would think just couldn't be, a bank whose debt was worth ten times the country's GDP. <laughs> When Wall Street imploded, sure enough it spread. Banks all over the world were floating in the red. All over the world, governments made the plan to cut spending and raise taxes on the working woman and working man. The banks were bailed out while the people had to pay. But in Iceland, people thought there must be a better way. And the earth stood still a moment. Fear was struck in every top. When Iceland told the bankers, Iceland told the bankers, Iceland told the bankers to fuck off. <laughs> That's the chorus. <laughs> Folks were in the streets in Reykjavik and just couldn't be ignored. They said this is a debt we Icelanders can't afford. Let's guarantee deposits of all our people, yes indeed. But as for all the speculators motivated by their greed to make really Dumb investments to them, Iceland said, good luck. Sorry for your losses, but we don't really give a fuck. The 1% all trembled when they took away the trough. When Iceland told the bankers, Iceland told the bankers, Iceland told the bankers to fuck off. Gordon Brown called them terrorists, said we cannot let this stand. Who do these peacenik blondes think they are in Iceland? They threatened isolation and economy in flames. But the Icelanders said, sorry, but the banks can settle their own claims. Though that might be harder for them now that they're under house arrest. Or else they fled the country as they were most unwelcome guests. And now Reykjavik's recovery just makes the fat cats cough. Since Iceland told the bankers, Iceland told the bankers, Iceland told the bankers to fuck off. If you haven't heard of this example, perhaps there's a reason why. The owners of the world don't want this kind of shit to fly. They say we all must pay up in this shakedown by the mob if we can't afford to pay the rent because we don't have a job. They say it's not their problem if we're forever shackled by their debt. We must save the 1% from the fate they should have met. But there is an alternative, though it makes the fat cat scoff since Iceland told the bankers. I Iceland told the bankers, Iceland told the bankers to fuck off. Since Iceland told the bankers, Iceland told the bankers, Iceland told the bankers to fuck off. it on the TV, machine guns, fire towards the ground, I watch the people run, helicopter gunship, strafing the street, watch them lining up the bodies in the Baghdad heat, they say these leaks have consequences, and I must agree. When I saw a fire on the children, it affected me. I thought, what if I were wearing the other shoe? If I had a hammer, what would I do? I am just a person like anyone. I am just another mother's son. No special powers. I cannot fly. Not like that helicopter gunship up in the sky. Sending all those bullets all 
all around to the journalists and children on the ground. I am just one man, that's very true. But if I had a hammer, what would I do? Sometimes I try to wonder, why should I care? But then the answer seems so obvious, there are people down there. And right here in Queensland, there's an army base. And there's a helicopter gunship, just sitting in place. There's a time for watching. There's a time to act. It's just gonna kill more children if it remains intact. I am just one person, but you are too. If you had a hammer, what would you do? If you had a hammer, what would you do? Okay, now we're going to do one more movie. Yeah, or at least I'll take a break, you know, let you take, you know, get it. I mean, the bar is right there, so you're not having problems getting up for a beer, so. At the end of World War Three. Amid the lightning and thunder, those left alive, as long as they live, were under. Is there something that could have been done before a nuclear winter blocked out the sun after the earth that we once knew was blown asunder? At the end of World War III, any pundits who may still be found Will have heated debates about how the end came around Was it the Black Sea blockade When the rush for the end times was made Or the breaking of promises promised When the wall came down At the end of World War III as people look for clean water to drink As they're dreaming of the days when they had a kitchen sink Wishing they could try again To talk to the belligerent men Back when we were only hanging on the brink At the end of World War Three. With billions dead or dying It won't matter who was right or who was lying When civilization has ended Once the last warheads descended Only then will there be no one left to mine At the end of World War Three. As the few left alive Survey the rubble remaining Wondering how long they'll survive Too late to question the story Of expansion or conquest or glory No time to rewind from the day Armageddon arrived At the end of World War Three.
I can't leave you with that song. No. I, I can't. So here's one. This is my daughter Koto's favorite song. She requests it every day, which is how I practice. I get this song practiced every day. I went to play at it's a that's the that's not such a good key. Let's see. <laughs> I went to play at the playground to do things I like so much. Run with my friends, play make believe, swing on the swings and such. This morning I went to the playground and bullies were guarding the swings. They knocked over the slide, dumped out the sandbox, took away all of our things. This playground is run by bullies and they're all so big and mean. But this playground was made for all of us and we're gonna change this scene. were scared of the bullies. They were so big and we were so small. Till somebody said if we organize, we could be ten feet tall. We stood on each other's shoulders, put blankets over our heads. We looked like monsters and we roared like lions and those bullies ran home and hid under their beds. This playground was run by bullies and they're all so big and mean. But this playground was made for all of us and we're gonna change this scene. We got that playground back But then we looked across the street Saw the sewage plant belching out smoke Poisoning the ground under our feet It's giving us all asthma And the hour is getting late So we marched across the way And we blocked that factory gate Cause this world is run by bullies And they're all so big and mean But this world was made for all of us And we're gonna change this scene This world is run by bullies And they're all so big and mean But this world was made for all of us And we're gonna change this scene